Yeah. Right on. Okay, thanks. Yeah, thank you. Okay, all yours. Okay. Um, uh, let me see how to hide this. Uh, we don't see anything. Just see the anything? slide. We just see the slide. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Hi, everyone. I hope everyone's keeping well and strong during this <laughs> moment uh, and all the best. So today I will introduce uh, this uh, multi-word expression work that I did recently with my supervisors, uh, Professor Gareth Jones and Professor Alan Smeaton. Uh, Gary is from ADAPT and uh, Alan from Insight Center. And uh, this is uh, mostly I will introduce this paper that uh, accepted by our REC 2020 as a long paper. And uh, we built a multi-word expression uh, corpora, we call it uh, multi-MWE, uh, multilingual multi-word expression parallel corpus. And firstly, I will introduce uh, multi-word expression research in ADAPT earlier than uh, this. And then I introduce some background knowledge about the multi-word expression, including the uh, definition and the, some shared tasks and the corpus construction. Then I will introduce some um, uh, interaction between translation and uh, multi-word expression. And certainly is about uh, this corpus that we made and uh, how we can use it. And in the application, I introduced the application in translation. However, I think theoretically and uh, technically, it can be applied to other multilingual and cross-lingual NLP tasks also. So firstly, uh, let's see uh, multi-registration research in ADAPT earlier. I joined a uh, shared task with Trinity colleague um, in 2017 uh, with Alfredo, Erwan, and Ash. Um, in that shared task, we submit a system uh, use the conditional random field to detect verbal multi-registration. And uh, in this shared task, uh, another highlight is that uh, we use semantic re-ranking to re-rank the CIF uh, output like uh, the 10 based uh, output, we re rank it with uh, semantic vectors. And this uh, semantic re ranking idea uh, was originally from R1. So, if uh, you're interested in this semantic re ranking in uh, an RP task, I suggest you contact R1 and Ash because later we finish a uh, book chapter for this work also. We did uh, detailed analysis about this. Uh, then we come to this uh, definition of multi registration. Um, many researchers define it in different way. However, generally, uh, they convey meaning like uh, a multi registration shall be a term including several words to express a specific concept. And this concept should be able to decompose and the words combined together as multi registration or syntactically, semantically pragmatically or statistically idiosyncratic in nature. And in the very earliest uh, work in 2002 by Sack, he also classified this material thread into institutionalized phrase and lexical phrase. For the lexical phrase, um, he mentioned this fixed or semi-fixed expression and the syntactically flexible expression. Let's see some uh, examples to easily understand it. Uh, for example, we can have idioms, metaphor, and uh, compound words, all expressed in multi expression way. Such as for idiom, people say kick the pocket. Or for metaphor, we can say apple of my eye to express concept. And uh, there are also a lot of different uh, word combinations from different part of speech stage, such as uh, verb particle and uh, adjective verb. Um, they all can be included in multiple expression research field. And the, for the appearance of a multiple expression, usually we say it has a continuous one or discontinuous. Discontinuous generally we mean there are some other common words inserted in this multiple expression group. And for continuous ones such as if we say uh, kick off, 
and uh, this also is a uh, name of magazine um, for football uh, lovers in this chat. You can check it out. And uh, I introduced some events about the multiverse session if uh, some of you are interested, because uh, apparently there are a lot of these things going on when I did such a uh, brief survey. Firstly, multiverse event research is mainly organized by a uh, special interest group of lexicon from ACL. And the first uh, year they organized this thing is from 2003. There's a workshop about multiverse version analysis, acquisition, and treatment in Japan. And then after that, uh, it's uh, happened almost every year. And uh, this year in Kolin 2020, they uh, joined the workshop about multiverse extraction and uh, electrical lexicon. Uh, for this uh, year 2020, they are still calling for paper. And uh, I just list uh, several of the topics that if you have interest, such as extracting and uh, enriching multi-return list, and the NLP applicable RMW lexicons, uh, using multi-return lexicon in NLP tasks, such as identification, parsing, translation, etc. And uh, so apparently there are a lot of such topics that span um, to different fields of uh, NLP, and uh, I suggest you have a check. And uh, in this part, I will introduce uh, the related the corpus construction of uh, multiverse reaction. Firstly, there is um, RDC corpus that's very uh, uh, close to dependence uh, parsing. And they use this corpus to facilitate the parsing task. Um, in this corpus, they annotated uh, English compound words. Um, and another uh, data is from uh, Schneider, 2014, is English multiverse version in uh, web reviews data. However, all these uh, multiverse extraction corpus listed here um, are monolingual tasks and uh, only focus on English. Um, there are some researchers recently they discussed that uh, natural language processing shall not be English language processing. So we need to do uh, really more languages uh, to make it more interesting to uh, other people. And uh, there is another uh, big project uh, called uh, Parsimi. It's uh, parsing and multiverse expression. It's an EU-funded project that has been running for many years. Um, and they also organized uh, several shared tasks already about uh, multiverse expression and uh, parsing. Um, the one that uh, uh, adapt uh, Trinity and the DCU when we attend the shared time in 2017 is also organized by this uh, Passimi uh, project. However, this um, Passimi uh, provided multiway expression corpus is uh, focused on verbal multiway expression. Um, it's like um, one kind of the common multiway expression. However, we have a lot of uh, many other categories. And the good thing from this project is that they offered uh, around 18 European languages um, that uh, uh, different native speakers can process on different languages. Um, however, the shortcoming is this uh, verbal multiple expression multilingual corpora is not a parallel. Um, and uh, some languages have uh, bigger data, some have very limited data, such as only hundreds of sentences or thousand sentences. And then uh, this section, I introduced some interaction between multiverse and with uh, translation, because uh, my uh, PhD was about translation, so I give you such an example. Uh, however, you can connect the multiverse with your own research, such as um, information extraction or uh, entity recognition many such cross-lingual research can be related with multiverse translation. Here I will list uh, three translation examples that uh, I tested with uh, Google's machine translation. Um, firstly, is the contemporary Chinese, or we call it Bai uh, Hua. Um, in this example, you can see the reference is uh, 
Xiaoming went to school to attend class. However, in the Google's machine translate output, it's translated into Xiaomi went to school. And uh, to attend class is totally uh, lost in this translation. Mm, but if we anal analyze the sentence, it's very simple um, um, structure because it is uh, chu, blah, 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 la. It's a discontinuous multiple expression of Chinese to convey, a mean, uh, to convey a meaning to say somebody went somewhere for something. So if the model can learn this multiple expression knowledge, then they can understand this sentence very easily. A second example I give is a uh, poem translation. In this poem translation, um, it's a very uh, easy and well aligned uh, poem, such as uh, this. Uh, I first read it in Chinese. Nian nian sui sui hua xiang se, sui sui nian nian ren bu tong. It means uh, every year the flowers are similar, however, every year people are changing. As I, align, um, I made some um, underline in this uh, poem, the first uh, four character, nian nian sui sui, and the second the sentence, first four character, sui sui nian nian, uh, multi-word expression in Chinese, and they are well aligned because they are very standard poem. Um, if the machine can understand this multi-word expression, then they should be able to do this disambiguation uh, in the character hua, because this hua in Chinese, uh, hua xiang si, hua can be flower, but uh, hua also means um, span money or span something. So this hua is a disambiguation word here, uh, it's an ambiguous word here. Um, this example I want to say, uh, the understanding of multi expression should help the disambiguation in this language translation and language processing because the uh, hua here is aligned to ren, the human. So it should be flower and noun instead of a verb if they understand this alignment well. And the third example and the last example also, I gave this uh, ancient Chinese, we call it the wen yan. In this um, example, either this sentence and the people use it to express meaning that the common folks don't know an ambitious guy's ambition, something like this. And uh, this translation by Google actually very poor. Uh, it uh, doesn't make any sense actually. However, if we analyze the sentence, it is a good. Um, this uh, and side that uh, I underlined in the sentence uh, is um, and is continuous multiple expression to say um, A don't know. B. And the uh, blah blah zai means how can A know B? So it's very easy structure. If we can feel the subject and the object with anything, and then they can translate the same style like uh, how can A know B? How can A know this thing? It is very uh, simple analyze. But because the machine cannot uh, recognize this multiple expression knowledge, so they put this translation randomly from this neural network or selective machine translation to do these statisticals or to do this um, other um, this neural learning. But it learned a very bad translation here. Like uh, the MT output is what is meaning of Yan Chi and Zhi Hong. It is um, like nonsense. And uh, some of the literatures that apply the machine translation with multiple session before, um, including serial machine translating time and neural machine translating time. 
and uh, you can look at this reference if you want to go deeper into that. Then we introduce this um, in-house multi-MW copper that we constructed. In this copper, um, we followed a pipeline that uh, uh, from 2017 um, Machine Translation Summit paper that uh, they did uh, an English Czech language and uh, we extended into German English and Chinese English. Uh, we also plan to extend to more languages uh, into like Italian, French and uh, Spanish in the close future. And uh, to extend this work, we need to do our, our contributions such as the pattern uh, contribution and the extraction uh, tools. Um, here is one uh, flowchart to have a, a view about how this uh, construction works simply. So firstly, we the most important thing is monolingual multiple expression extraction and then the alignment of the extracted uh, monolingual MWE. And then we do filtering. In this uh, monolingual extraction uh, phase, um, we need to do uh, part of speech pattern design that is um, required by this MWE toolkit developed by uh, Carlos from uh, Perfect in France. And then we use uh, MWE tools from uh, 2017 by Richter and uh, Bolger uh, to convert them to this uh, MP aligner tools. And use MP aligner, we do this alignment of bilingual uh, MWEs. And to do this alignment, we need some basic files that we can run from Celsius MT, such as Moses and uh, Tita++. To get to the bilingual lexicon translation probability, and then we do filtering. This filtering is to make sure that uh, we only use the high quality multiple expression that is aligned. Here is a short example about the patterns we applied for Chinese uh, multiple MWE that we contributed, uh, and it's also on the GitHub. People all can download them. Uh, yeah, here's a presentation. And currently, but uh, we prepared our own pattern and the stop word list and the Chinese English translation probably files. Um, such as uh, for this Chinese pattern, um, in this uh, RC MC corpus we use is a uh, called the Lancaster Corpus of Mandarin Chinese. They have idiom, fake expression, personal name, place name, organizer name. This uh, kind of POS text that we can use directly. And here are some examples that we extracted. Uh, for Chinese, um, I give example this bo ji, means uh, dust pan. However, if we split a bo ji into two characters, independently it doesn't uh, mean anything like uh, but they together means this uh, uh, item dust plan so that's why we say uh, we need to combine them together for this research and uh, another easy uh, example uh, DNA, uh means computer actually Chinese uh, DNA mean, uh, DN means electricity now means a brain so in China, probably when the computer came to China, people think it's electronic or brain. So such a kind of multiple structure is very uh, language related. And here are some example about uh, German English uh, after filtered with threshold of 0 0.7. And then I will briefly introduce this application in translation for three minutes something. Uh, to say it's useful that what we made. But you can apply it to other NLP tasks for sure. In this application, we apply it to German English, Chinese English uh, neural machine translation. The baseline is a full attention based uh, transformer model. And we use the uh, some 
platform from uh, Tsinghua University Machine Translation Group. The training data is 5 million sentences and uh, development and test data from WMT workshop. And in this uh, automatic uh, evaluation from blue, uh, you can see that this multiverse fashion with uh, filtered multiverse fashion for German English, both later of the um, automatic score. And for Chinese English translation, mostly it increased the trigram and foregram score. That is better than German English because it means trigram and foregram is a bigger span of the trunk. It's better translated after we include our multiverse fashion corpus. However, we know blue score is not that reliable as criticized by many researchers. So we also did some inside the view uh, by human being. When we look at uh, this example, like uh, this Kou Shui Zhan, the phonetics uh, of Chinese words, it means uh, water fighting. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, it's translated into water fighting by the baseline. However, it means uh, oral combat in the reference. It uh, was translated wrongly into water fighting because in Chinese, this uh, oral combat is described as uh, saliva plus war. So it is uh, uh, wrongly translated by the baseline. However, in our system, uh, we have a, a more meaningful translation uh, like a, um, oral combat, even though the reference is a war of words. So the translation of our system is close to the reference. However, this is not reflected by the blue score because oral combat doesn't have any matching in the word surface with war of words. So this kind of improvement is not recognized by blue. However, it is recognized by human evaluation. And another example I give here is like uh, means supposed friend. And in our system, we translate like a so-called friend. However, in the baseline, this uh, supposed or so-called, this modifier is totally lost. So it's only translated into friend. In the automatic evaluation, it uh, can get a similar score with our system because this so-called doesn't match suppose in the reference by word surface. However, apparently this modifier by adding so-called is much better than without adding anything in the baseline. Yeah, and then here I gave some selective reference such as if you are interested in Chinese character knowledge for machine translation or for entity recognition, multiple expression, uh, we have two other papers before from 2018 and 2013. Um, and if you are interested in the corpus, here is the GitHub link about the corpus, including the full paper reference and uh, the corpora and the pattern we offered. Um, or in the GitHub site. Yeah, thanks everyone for the listening and uh, I hope you get some useful information from this slide. Cheers, thanks a million. Fang. we really appreciate that. Um, everyone who's on the call, feel free to, you can take off your mics if you'd like to ask the question or you can uh, put them in the chat window, whichever you prefer, but microphones and videos welcome if you want. Yeah, I would like to ask a question. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah, we can. Yeah. Yeah. First of all, thanks. It was a really interesting talk. Um, I was curious because in my case,